In today's unboxing video, we're going to be unboxing this here, which is the Sunlu S8. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got the Sunlu S8 today, which is a printer I've had sat in its box for about a month. Uh, I've just been too busy to get it open. But I saw it on the Sunlu website itself, and they had a deal on and one of those spin the wheel prize giveaway things. And I think I ended up getting this printer for about 130 pounds, which given it's a 300 mil by 300 mil by 400 mil 3D printer, that is insanely cheap. Let's hope it's a bargain and a good value for money. Okay, so on unboxing the printer, we've got the guidebook, spatula, clippers, and some spare parts. We've got some laser cut parts and a roller, which I presume will be the spool holder, UK power cable, it looks to be a spare thermistor, the USB adapter, a glue stick, and the data cable. Flick this up. You can see we've got the gantry here. It's cable tied to the power unit. 200 gram roll of filament there, and that's it. Okay, so if I lie this down, take a cutting tool and remove these cable ties. Now we've got the gantry. We can take off the foam from around the head. I'm getting massive Corality CR10 vibes here. Wow, that bed rolls really smooth. Nice. Anyway, let's look at the guidebook and see how they want us to assemble this printer. So first of all, it says unwrap the machine and take off the cable ties. I think I've done most of that already, but uh, I will just remove this bubble wrap from the bed. So for the glass bed, we've got a ceramic coated ultra base style build surface, which looks really nice. And obviously you've got the plain glass on the back. It says here, there's a protective coating on this steel. So I'm just gonna peel that off. And then we can put the bed back on. I'm gonna leave it ceramic side up. The bed is installed with the provided bulldog clips, which are a fairly standard thing. When I'm using bulldog clips, and I'm putting them down the side. I like to remember to remove the pieces of metal from the bulldog clip as otherwise that's gonna get in the way of the bed moving and it will crash into the side of the frame. Okay, so we can now install the gantry onto the frame. We just lift it over like this and there are some T-bars that are already installed onto the base of the frame here. So in this pack of tools here, we've got a set of Allen keys, and the M5 sliders, some screws, and some spare nozzle parts. I'll leave those in there. We're going to need this M5 by eight slider and the screws there. What we're gonna do is take these, slide them up the side here. Same on the other side. Move the bed down out of the way. And then we just put the screw through the T-bar and into that sliding nut and tighten it up, of course. Before I tighten them up fully, I'm gonna use these bigger M5 by 25 screws, which are going to go in from the underside. So I'll turn the printer over here like this and tighten them in. And now that those are tightened in from the bottom, I'm gonna tighten again the ones that go into the T-bar. Tightening the bottom first just means that the gantry is pulled properly down into the frame. And then the T-bar just gives it that extra bit of security. Okay, that's nice and solid. As you can see, this printer has come pretty much assembled ready, which is really nice. I love how smoothly this bed is moving, although it does have a bit of a wobble. So I'm just gonna check that we can tighten that a little bit by using the eccentric nuts on the bottom. Can't seem to see a wrench that these printers often come with, but obviously I've got loads of those, so not the end of the world. Um, but you might need to get a wrench if you don't already have one, if you're getting this printer. Okay, so you get your wrench in, You'll need quite a thin one to actually access it. Get the wrench in against the nut and just give it a slight rotation to tighten. That's now got rid of the wobble in the bed. Check the head as well. That one's got a little bit of wobble, so I'm just gonna tighten the eccentric nut there as well. That's got rid of the wobble there and we've still got lovely, nice, smooth moving. That really is one of the smoothest beds. I've ever, ever felt that moves like this in the bed slinger design. Okay, we can then assemble the filament holder. We've got these laser cut parts. Peeling off the film from laser cut parts like this really takes me back to, well, 
either school or assembling the early printers that used to come as kits with this uh, laser cut acrylic which I've never really been a fan of. Okay, that's that taken apart. I presume they just push together like so. Like that, it's gonna have my lovely finger marks on it. And then got the roll on top like that. Looks like it's gonna be able to hold a reasonable size spool. Let's see if it can hold one of my new TKG, 2KG spools, which I'll get round to releasing at some point. <laughs> No, unfortunately, not big enough. Not big enough for a 2kg. So we've got a 1kg spool holder, but it looks like it'll take some reasonably fat spools. We then use these little bolts just to give it a bit of extra security. Oh my God, this is annoying. Okay, so the spool holder took twice as long to assemble as the printer did, but there we go. You get that spool holder with it as well. You then, like with most printers, have to check the little red switch on the side of the power supply, which is at the back there, just to make sure that it's at the correct voltage for your area. In the UK, that's 230 volts. And that's it. We are ready to turn the printer on. But before I do that, I'll just comment on a few of the things I've noticed. It does seem to be a very similar printer to the Creality CR10S because it's got the dual lead screws. Uh, other than that, it is very similar. It's got a slightly different hot end design, so it'll be interesting to see how that performs with regards to cooling. I know the CR10 machines did occasionally suffer from heat creep. It's got cooling from the one side. By eye, looks to be blasting directly at the hot end, so probably not the best part cooling on this printer, but we shall see. It's got the single geared plastic extruder drive gear with a filament runout sensor, again in plastic, so both of those will experience wear. But, I mean, for the price I paid, the, the amount of kit you're getting here is, is crazy. If you were to try and buy all this individually, you'd, you'd be looking at 250, 300 pounds. So, you know, if you can pick one up for the price that I've paid for this, then I don't know why you wouldn't. It's crazy cheap. Anyway, so we'll, we'll plug it in, switch it on. We've got a roller wheel here and the display. Nice, simple, easy to use. I don't foresee any problems with that. It's got nice strain relief here for the printer bed. All of the connections have been glued in, so it's very unlikely that any of them will shake loose. We've got some consideration to cable constraint for the hot end just by way of attaching it to the Bowden tube. All in all, not a bad looking unit. And so that's it for this video. Let me know what you thought. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're looking for a medium to big 3D printer, on a budget, this could well be the printer for you. You'll have to wait and see, and see what I think in my review video, which will follow in a few weeks time. As I said, I picked this up for less than 150 pounds, which is crazy for the size, and I have been reasonably impressed with the unboxing so far. Before I go, I've got three questions for you. Question number one, what is the most important factor that you consider when buying a printer? Is it price? Is it build volume? Is it some particular specification, the temperature ratings? Is it a chamber? What is your most important factor when buying a 3D printer? Question number two, what is your favorite style of filament holder? Do you like the freestanding ones like this? Do you like the ones that come separately and actually physically clamp to the printer? Do you like the roller wheel ones or do you like to design your own? And question number three isn't actually a question. Well, sort of is, it's more of a giveaway. I get lots of printers and they often come with these spools that I don't like. I like to use my own filament. And basically, I'm gonna give them away. So the question is, what is the combined weight of these five rolls here? If you're in the UK, you can enter the competition. All you have to do is have a guess of the combined weight of this stack, 
put it in the comments down below and when I do the review video I will announce the winner and send it out. Just to clarify, it does have to be in the UK, you only get one guess and the closest guess will win. If you're watching this after the review video is launched you can still guess and see if you got closer. I won't ever say actually what the weight is so you can continue to try and guess the closest and I'll let you know who gets closer as time goes on. Anyway, that's it for this video. Once again, don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.